In the 1850s, Ripley was a thriving river town. The town's proximity to the Ohio River and the slaveholding state of Kentucky made it an early stop on the Underground Railroad, where high atop a hill sat the home of John Rankin, a place of refuge for escaping slaves. John Rankin was a Presbyterian minister who was a Tennessean by birth and left his home state of Tennessee because of his opposition to slavery. He and his wife, Jean, came to Ripley in 1822, and he served as a minister of the Presbyterian Church in Ripley until 1863. With the help of his children, John Rankin, abolitionist and Underground Railroad conductor, offered his home and help to more than 2,000 people seeking freedom, never losing a passenger along the way. He chose this site for the view, the vantage point that it offered him as a conductor. Rankin believed it was important to see activity down in the village of Ripley, out on the Ohio River and on the Kentucky shoreline. Throughout the years, the Rankins would keep a light of some sort, a lamp or a lantern burning in one of the front windows of their house overlooking the Ohio River. And that was used as a guide or a beacon to slaves escaping out of Kentucky. They were told, if you make it to the river around Ripley, Ohio, look for the house on the hill and the light in the window. That's a safe house. And if you go there, the family that lives there will help you. Fugitive slaves who attempted escapes faced many dangers. You're never really sure who you can trust or who you can't on your journey. It, it's a very big risk. Once fugitives made it across the Ohio River, they had to climb up the river bank and then make their way through the streets and the alleys of downtown Ripley and find their way to the bottom of the hill. Some would climb the hill going through the weeds and going through bushes, and others would climb the wooden steps that ran to the front door of the Rankin home. Many times fugitive slaves would realize that there were bounty hunters or their owners, their slave owners, following them, pursuing them, trying to reclaim their runaway property. So it was difficult, it was dangerous. The Ohio River was half the distance that it is now. So it wasn't a formidable body of water in terms of width. It was formidable in the psychological sense so that people standing on the south side were intimidated by even having the thought of crossing. Once the fugitives reached the house on the hill, they were taken in by the Rankins and hidden until they were ready to make the next leg of their journey. Rankin, in his later years, wrote his autobiography. And from that, we know of three places where we believe he hid slaves. Two here at the house, the attic in the cellar, the third was in a large barn that was in the back of the property. In addition to John Rankin being a conductor and sheltering fugitive slaves in his home, he was speaking out against slavery from his Presbyterian church pulpit. He was writing and printing anti-slavery material. There were anti-slavery societies in Ripley that he established and beyond. The Rankin family did not act alone. Other Ripley residents were active in the Underground Railroad, many of whom lived along the waterfront. One resident stands out. A former slave himself, John P. Parker risked everything to venture out at night helping people escape across the river. His home on Front Street still stands and is now a museum. How I hated slavery as it fettered me and beat me. It baffled me in my desires. But in the end, that unknown ancestor of mine gave me the will and the courage to conquer or die. John Parker. We say the era of the Parkers in Ripley was 1850 to 1900, where he was a businessman, established his own business, the Phoenix Foundry. He raised seven children who all were in college and became college-educated professors, teachers, and he also, of course, was an abolitionist. And he had the camaraderie with the Reverend John Rankin up on Liberty Hill. 
John Parker, in his own words, in his autobiography, His Promised Land, talks about he took a skiff, the narrow boat, and he would go in the night hours and receive people by way of his boat. John Parker um, had this indomitable spirit. He just refused to be crushed um, by an oppressive system, uh, making use of free labor, exploiting children's labor, and built a career for himself and a life for his family. It's unbelievable that as a seven-year-old taken to a slave market from Norfolk, Virginia down to Mobile, Alabama, walking all that distance, uh, chained to a 70-year-old man, that at the age of 23 he would buy his own freedom, uh, come to Ripley and become one of the wealthiest people here in the town, becoming an industrialist, an inventor, a man who was involved in uh, political action, uh, in recruiting people for the Civil War, a, a Renaissance man. In addition to John Parker, there were other men and women of African American descent who were underground railroad conductors in Ripley, and some of them were pretty tough characters. Men and women like Rhoda Jones, Billy Marshall, and Polly Jackson, rumored to have fended off slave catchers with a butcher knife and boiling water, helped hundreds on their journey to freedom. Just to the north of us, on the ridge of the hill, and to the east of us, on the floodplain, there were black settlements. And there was a black underground organization. And we have copies of minutes from a meeting and in January 1851 from that group. And we also have minutes from the white abolition group. And they were both violently opposed to the Fugitive Slave Act, which had been passed in 1850. So Ripley had an open black and white underground railroad system, and they cooperated with each other. What I think makes this so special. Ripley is visited by people from all over the world who come to this little bitty place that challenged a system that underwrote the building of the American economy. It was Ripley, it was Marietta, it was all of those kinds of places. They were the enslaved people themselves who operated behind the lines. It's a, it's a wonderful story, flawed, but real and powerful.